Hi everyone, what I'm talking about today are things I have done for myself that I have in, in, and am in the process of doing for myself that I recognize as being healing, self-healing for me. And without being a victim, but by being a victor over what has happened to me. And it helped me personally to have my natal chart done. And we'll talk more about that later. I have a dog that wants in. Hold on, be right back. So natal chart is a astrological reading of what was happening in the bodies, uh, celestial bodies at the time of your birth. So that means where the sun was, where the moon, where all the planets, and every planet has a distinct personality or frequency, if you will. And then there's like a big pie in the sky and it's revolving and it's the sky clock and it's divided in 12 slices in um, the pizza pie in the sky known as the horoscope. <laughs> and, but I, I like to see it as pizza pies and every slice has a different flavor of you. And there are sometimes there are houses or flavors or parts of the pizza pie that are completely empty. And that doesn't mean anything other than there aren't any influences there. So some, pl uh, some people have planets that are in uh, one side of the chart more than the other. And so that things do happen to them more than they happen to things. So that's why we must be compassionate to all people and recognize that even though the so-called adage all men are created equal, we're not. And also we're all here on our own journey. And there's just so much to talk about, about the reality of this realm, this planet earth. And to even get there, I'm working it out, talking to you to, to tell you that there is no one and done quick over and out. I'm going to do this and it's going to be beneficial for the rest of my life. It's always seeking. It's always seeking. However, we hear things from the outside that we end up taking in as beliefs. So there's nothing wrong with always seeking. I too am a seeker. I am on the journey to understand my life as a spiritual entity. Why here? Why now? Um, why white privilege? Why white? Why am I uh, in between the boomers and the X generation and the forgotten J Jonesers? Um, 63, 64, 62, we're completely different than like 59, 58, those people. So, um, I know I'm all over the place. Pull up a cup of cup. I got some water right now. So, okay. There's a detoxification process that happens once you begin your healing, healing journey post-narcissistic abuse when you're able to either extricate yourself, extrapolate, completely be away from and alienate yourself completely from the narcissist. Or if you're in the house because you can't leave and it's not that bad, it's not like your life is going to depend on it. Um, it's just a nuisance being with this person day in and day out. That's a different, that's, that's the garden variety narcissist. If you can live with them, so you can live with their crappy moods, being mad at you for some unimagined thing, but they're just mad at you and they're grumpy and they don't appreciate you and they don't consider your needs. And when you want to talk about family matters, they shut down and get upset and confounded and get kind of mad, but you, you plot on, you do what you got to do anyway, like balance the family checkbook. Um, you can look past that. You can get past that type. Um, if you had the misfortune of marrying them, um, stick it out, man, especially if you've had kids, but you'll never be satisfied with that partner. But I can tell you, as a person who's been out there in the world, 
Uh, I did not make mistakes leaving my partners because of who I am. And now that I know what's in my natal chart, I can see it was very ob obvious and evident that I would do that. Um, but I had to leave my partners in order to not die. A spiritual death, a physical death, an emotional death. I had three different types and now I'm pretty good at recognizing the behavior and they all had the same patterning. So I bring that to the table when a person may want to have their own healing journey with a coach. So I would I definitely um, will be hireable if anybody does need a personal coach. But there are people already doing this better than me. That's not my shtick, unless you just can't live without it. But the little shaman, the little shaman is the person who I resonated with. And then there's women in, uh, that wear business suits and makeup that you might resonate with. And, I mean, I just gave up wearing makeup other than an eye accentuator for my own desire of being a wash and wear girl and to also embrace my idea of beauty, not the outside one, the plastic women that do things to their hair. They, everything is fake. Everything is fake. It's just crazy. So the, what is the real, right? So in that, in our reality, it's what you say it is to a degree. I'm going to go there too, but okay, let me, let me back up, back up. When you live a life with a narcissistic parent, you have lived an entire life in which they have told you who you are. It's not complimentary. So then you spend your adult life actually learning who you are. Really. In my book, Lay Girls, you will read about how it took 250 men saying how beautiful my legs were before I finally agreed and realized they were. And then women told me that, oh yeah, you have beautiful legs. They're almost perfect, some women said. But I was told I had chicken legs and my legs were ugly my entire life by my mother. That's an example of a narcissistic abuse. The continuous verbal negation throughout my entire childhood about the uh, unsightliness of my legs, chicken legs, just like your father. And I didn't see anything wrong with his legs, but then she would back it up, my mother, with, you get what you get. You get what you get. Deal with it. So... Because she gave me on one side this huge, massive insult and, the, and also the airs about her then showing me her legs and about how her, her legs were perfect and that the golden child Corgi, her legs were most closely resembled hers. That's the kind of calves she has too you know, the perfect leg, her and the golden child. And that mom were chicken legs, just like my father. Ugh. <laughs> oh man, okay, this is gonna be a long one. I wish I had good chat, but I don't do live, so. Um, you empty out and you detoxify this fucking shit out of your system to know who the fuck you really are, okay? And it takes a while. I'm 60. So my, now I'm really good at it. And I am offering the things that I know how to do. And one of them is get your natal chart done, read it, and believe it. But be prepared to resist all the good things that are on that chart and be prepared to only look for the bad things or the challenging things and make those what's important. And forget all about the skills and the wonderful gifts and the other abilities that you have exhibited here, 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 and here in your natal chart because you're so resistant 
the positivity is in your life, you only were given negative commentary. And when you did receive positive, that positive then gave you negative attention, which was my sister's seething jealousy that I was receiving some sort of attention that was positive. And they let me know it displeased them. Now this year, 2023, my mother had her massive stroke in January. She was out of it for six weeks. She thought it was four days in the hospital. And in February, I went to visit her. And um, by that time, I was no longer speaking to either of my sisters. Well, it was in the midst of being there in Arizona that I stopped talking to my second sister, the one closest to me in age who was my Irish twin, the golden child. The first one was brutally yelled at. She was the true scapegoat. Then we all became scapegoats. And then of course she made me the scapegoat, my sister Janine, blaming me for her, her husband's, uh, you know, wandering eye. It was my fault. It was my fault. Her husband had the wandering eye and was looking at me, my fault. The family says, I have to leave. I have to leave the, 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 the fold. I can't be amongst them anymore. I'm, I'm gone. I'm done. Go. Because you let him like you by being flirtatious. You were inappropriate, Kathleen. So then I get scapegoated. And my sister plays the victim. <laughs> You're ruining my life, Kathy. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. So I'm, I'm tough. I'm a tough bitch. Yeah. I'm a very honest one, too. If you look at the history of my videos, nothing has changed except maybe my... Uh, stress levels have reduced a great deal. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the natal chart and we're going to detoxify from the false beliefs that you have had. Um, we can do some Byron Katie work. If you've ever heard of Byron Katie, it's the truth of what is. When we're unhappy about something we think is true and we look at it and realize it may not be true, and we can change the way we view something so that we can actually feel better. Because that's our ultimate goal. That's the sign of a healthy person. Somebody that would want to be right, no matter what, such as a narcissist, couldn't love what is. Because they don't necessarily want to feel good inside. They want to have conflict. That was the other thing about all the narcissists. They all needed a certain level of conflict, which I was always wondering, why are we always having conflict when it's unnecessary? Like, why aren't you happy, Jeff, with two beautiful, healthy children? A, one, a boy, a girl, one of each. A beautiful wife. <laughs> what more could you ask? No, wasn't happy. He wanted me to work so he could have more things. No, nope, wasn't happy. Of course, there's no such thing as a, uh, there's no such thing as emotional abuse, according to Owen Benjamin, who I adore and appreciate on all other issues but that one. But he doesn't know, and happiness is that he doesn't know. So good for him. He doesn't know what it's like being emotionally abused. <laughs> he can count himself very, very lucky. Uh, I grew up with emotional abuse as a child. Um, and I now know fully what uh, I was dealing with. And so I'm doing the healing. And when you do the healing, you, you're no longer the victim, you're the victor. It's like the snake that's transforming, not eating its own snail, its own tail. It's like the, the poison from a snake that you become impervious to. I am so impervious to the poison of the narcissist 
that I knew exactly what was happening in the years 2020 and 2021. I saw the goalposts moving. I saw the, goal, the gaslighting, the intimidation tactics. I saw it all. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I've mastered this. Uh, and so I'm going to help people with it if they're in the midst of either, if you're living with it, there's the gray rock method. Just stop reacting to them emotionally. It's like lush to the, uh, archons. I mean, come on, man, just stop. So teaching people what the goodness is in them. I really discovered the goodness that I have in me. Like what I really have is just so incredible. I brought me tears of profound joy to realize I wasn't the scum of the earth like I was told uh, and treated. And even though I was told and treated that, I knew that within me that wasn't true because I was sent to my room so many times, I would go then and burrow my, myself in the closet. I had toys in the closet and it was my little safe space is what they would call it now. And I would, I would find that I would feel the energy of love there. And I was that nowadays people would call them angels. I felt loving presences. And I found God in the closet. You know, I got sent to my room for telling my mother I loved her out of the blue. I felt it. It's in my book, Lee Girls. I said, I love you, Mom. And she disciplined me because she said, you don't just come out and say that, Kathleen, unless you've done something bad. And she's going to find out by golly. And I, she better find out sooner rather than later because later is going to make things worse. And why don't I go to my room and think about it if I can't tell her what it is. So I get sent to my room for feeling love and expressing it because narcissists can't accept love and they hate you for you loving them. They resent you for you loving them. They push you away for you loving them. They make you wrong for loving them. They're sick fucks. So every single one of my husbands did that. Um, and that last boyfriend, that, that bad daddy, the, the one that's so lazy, he, 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 uh, he somehow manages to fuck the neighbor. I mean, he's so lazy, whatever's convenient, desperate, white, female. That's his, uh, <laughs> catch. That's who he catches. I was a desperate white female when he, when he caught me. In, in 2010. I was love starved. I was coming out of a severely emotionally abusive marriage because even though my children's father was the garden variety, I could handle it. I just didn't understand why he could never be happy. And I just, I wanted a man to be happy. I wanted a man to be happy that I was his wife. I wanted a man to be happy I was a mother. And my second husband was all of those things until his mother died. But the signs were always there and the abuse was always there. It just escalated and exponentially became more and more intense. Yeah, they, they love bomb you or they manipulate you or they find whatever it is you're desperate about. I desperately needed to raise my children with a man and I attracted him and he was great. And I really did love him. I really did. I chose husband number two. I loved him. He should know that. But he was too sick, um, too much of a controller, a dry drunk. His mother died and he wanted to make it my responsibility. He was what would, is now known as the self-righteous um, narcissist. I liked it because he, I loved him um, for his mind. He was a Gemini and we had great conversations. And then the after, after a while, um, after it was sex, he would, he would not give me sex. It would then be not give me attention. And henceforth, I now measure all relationships by the three A's. And the three A's are attention, affection, and acknowledgement. And without those three things, a relationship is not worth shit. Um, attention, affection, acknowledgement. 
And I was like, nope, nope, nope. You know, the other thing you can do if you're in a narcissistic relationship now is draw a happy face on any day. Get a calendar that only you know about. And it helps to have a handwritten one. And just have symbols that mean something that only you know about. Like a happy face or, you know, an emoji of some kind. And what I um, couldn't put even one happy face in on a day um, in the entire month in which my husband did not goad me into an argument, nitpick, find something wrong, cause a confrontation. I did everything I could to avoid it. The guy was in my face. And, um, yeah. And the self-righteous, I ran my own business then like I do now, and I was doing a mail um, postcard sending, direct mail thing. I made my own postcards, I, pr I printed them, I, I designed them at home, I printed them at home, I cut them at home, and I had the project out on the pub table. And when he came home from work, he, threw, he went into a rage. Now that's emotional abuse for a man to come home and go into a rage. Why? Because he wanted the house perfectly picked up when he got home. He wanted everything as neat as a pin because he worked in uh, back grocery stores all day long and he deserved beauty. That's the self-righteous fucking narcissist. Not, hey, that's somebody uh, that's really going for it. That's my wife. She's uh, somebody I'm proud of and she's working and she is um, making this creative project. And oh, look, she designed her own postcards. It's very clever. Good job, babe. Nope. That's emotional abuse, but of course, it doesn't exist in Owen Benjamin's world because he and his wife have a loving relationship. And I really like Owen Benjamin tremendously, except for that issue. But what do I know? I'm just a white chick in America, right? Uh, nobody knows anything about me, but they certainly can make judgments. What did she do with all her husbands? I bet she got a lot of alimony. Nope. Because I don't want to have any uh, attachment to the material realm. And I'm doing everything I can in this lifetime to not have any karmic debt. And even if the law said I could have had 50%, my higher self didn't want it, okay? My ego could say, well, it would have been really nice to have had that house and passed it down to your kids. But at the time, I wasn't thinking it. At the time, I felt exalted. My higher self wanted to be on and done. So, you know, when a person is fearing for their life and their heart beats rapidly and they think they're going to get hit by their partner and they experience violence from their partner and then they decide to divorce their partner, do you then think they're going to feel any safer? That's what I was coming from. So when I moved into my safe sanctuary and I met this hunk of dory, hunky, hunky, Herculean man van, I was white, desperate female. <laughs> so I'm an expert and now I'm a wise woman. And so I'll be leading retreats. And so the natal chart we'll be able to do, we'll be able to talk about it. But we can also have group sessions if people aren't into that. There's going to be a poll. Who wants to talk about what? I bring a lot of information and insight into the natal chart. So you might want to decide that's an important thing to talk about. Um, the other thing is having an assessment, assessing the truth about yourself, really taking inventory of what is true about you and detoxifying. So I am eliminating all of this stuff that's not true about me. I'm bringing stuff in that is true about me. And this is stuff that's true about me from within. I enjoy my own company. <laughs> I have fun with myself. I enjoy it. I enjoy traveling. 
And I, I got off of online dating. I was looking for a compadre. And now I realize that, no, you just have to live your life. And besides, what man in your history, Kathleen, has not dragged you back so that you can lift them up? Nah, none of them. So I know now, looking at my chart, that's one of my skills. I lift up my partner. Now I'm lifting up myself. So that's how I'm doing, I'm lifting up myself. Um, so recently, I, uh, after I did that yoga retreat for myself, I started looking into yoga uh, here, and I really do like taking yoga in a class. It's just $20 a class, now it's expensive, so I thought, well, maybe I'll teach it. So now I've been looking for a place to teach. But in the meantime, something came across my sale, uh, my, my screen of reality, and it's West Coast Swing. So I'm gonna do this intensive West Coast uh, Swing weekend. I'm getting I'm getting suede bottom shoes. <laughs> because in the past, I was going to put on my dating app, which I did, um, I wanted them to take dance lessons. Let's get together this meet, let's agree upon a dance style, and then do dance lessons. Well, this guy writes back and he wanted to do some fucking Latin American thing, which is sort of like dry humping uh, on uh, in, in dance form in front of people and grinding, you know? I'm like, no, no. I got paid to do that to a poll. <laughs> so my book, Daddy Jacks, it's the second one. I'm telling you, I'm writing, these books are all in rough draft form, but I'm not motivated without an, an advance. So to become known, I have to have retreats, and then we can also do a writing retreat. I've got all kinds of, th of exercises and things I've learned on writing because of my own endeavor. I've been doing it for a decade, it's ridiculous. I've been saying since 2010 and beyond that I'm writing a book. You know how many years ago that is? 13. And I have, it's just that, again, it's hard to go through that stuff too. It's hard. And, in, and in, in, when you're in the midst of the emotional uh, <clears throat> charge of being in a narcissistically abusive relationship, I get upset just thinking about it. Um, it's really hard to recount the days that you had as a childhood and how it, it, the foundation was laid. And I didn't even know that's what I was dealing with. So in the book, I have to deal with narcissistic abuse without calling it out. When you write, you show, you don't tell. You don't say, my mother was pathologically narcissistic. No, you, you say <clears throat> what I told you, which is, you know, my, my heart welled up and I, I went to my mother who was at the kitchen table with one of her sewing projects. She had sewn me some dresses who, which I were uh, delighted by. I wish I could have said, but no, that wasn't true. She had sewn her, herself her own clothes. She didn't see putting all the effort into clothing that we would outgrow. but she did make something for her granddaughter. Um, she made something for my granddaughter. She made a nice dress for, my grand, for her granddaughter. Janine, um, my, my older sister, this, this uh, beat, beaten down scapegoat, uh, which was nice. So the narcissist is now an awful person. That's the other thing that people, it's hard, it messes with your head. If they were always a, if they were always a, an awful person, it, it would be easier to understand the predicament of the victim at the time. You are a victim, so I survived. Um, and you learn getting past surviving. You, you learn to thrive. But in the meantime, it's really a, a lifetime of brainwashing is being undone within me. So that's how I'm doing. I'm really processing a lot. 
and, and realizing that the online scam was really for, um, it does work, I think, for people who are younger who want to have babies. Um, but when you're older and the men that are in there that are older, I just don't think they're, I, I think they're, they're, they're just damaged goods. And they're not like me. I'm there because... I refuse to be abused anymore. But some men are out there saying, well, because they're the abusers. That's the difference between me being single and, you know, those men out there being single. You know, there's a joke, it goes, you know, when women, they go on a date, they have to worry about being killed or, or raped or, or Mickey roofied. Um, but the men just have to worry about whether or not she's fat or older than her pictures. You know, <laughs> so um, yeah, detoxifying from all of that. So this has been long enough. There's more to tell you and I will make another video. Cheers.